Hello, welcome to our webinar, uh, Dynamic Contract Management and AR Remote Assist with Productive Edge and Shrokin. My name is Rahil Retiwala. I'm very excited to have you with us today, and so are uh, my co-presenters, uh, who I'm going to introduce now. Again, my name is Rahil. I am the Executive Vice President of Productive Edge. Uh, I will be speaking with you about uh, the investments in industrial IoT and how we see the services continuum uh, enabling a richer set of opportunity for industrial machine manufacturers. And then um, I will have uh, Sanjay Kubarkar, who is the founder of Shrokin, uh, talk to us about dynamic contract management, SLA management, as far as service transformation is concerned, and then um, have Tim Arnold, uh, Solutions Director at Productive Edge, who will be speaking with you about augmented reality and expanding how you can optimize your field operations. Uh, we're looking forward to speaking with you, and uh, we've got an action-packed agenda. Um, so first, I will be talking about going beyond initial investments. Uh, then I'll hand it off to, to Sanjay, who will talk to you about dynamic contract management. And then Tim will take uh, and speak about AR Remote Assist. Uh, as far as uh, connected industrial machines are concerned, you know I think there is already uh, a web pretty well-known opportunity uh, that that uh, industrial machine manufacturers have in regards to connected machines, and the value of of doing so. Um, uh, there are clearly low-hanging fruit opportunities from a business perspective that have been available, and and many industrial manufacturers have already taken steps towards uh, achieving those. For instance. You know, things like um, from a net new revenue pr uh, generation perspective, uh, providing predictive maintenance services, or even thinking about new tiered service offerings and, you know, providing a set of spectrum of services uh, to clients around machine maintenance, uh, break fix, or uh, predictive maintenance. Uh, there's also a customer satisfaction aspect of uh, making and providing a connected product to your clients which really is all about you know, providing them with, with visibility, transparency around asset utilization, uh, proactive field services, uh, and then you know, even enabling uh, you know, a proactive uh, preventative maintenance type services as well to ensure that the customers are satisfied and also to make sure that there's a differentiation on your product and what, how the services that you deliver to your clients. Um, there's also operational efficiencies as far as low-hanging fruits are concerned. Uh, you know, there's cost reduction uh, from, you know, from a production perspective. There's worker productivity and insights into those. There's worker safety scenarios and use cases. And all of these together really form the foundation for the business case in investing, in building, and bringing a connected machine and your, or connecting an existing uh, or retrofitting an existing machine with, uh, you know, with IoT and connected services to, uh, to bring that to market. But really, from a business perspective, uh, those opportunities, like I said, are low-hanging fruit. There are plenty of more opportunities. And as, as you know, the, the, from a maturity perspective, your organization matures in terms of how and what services are being delivered. And you know, uh, you know, fundamentally, there will be a question about well, what else can we do? And we see there is a significant opportunity from a revenue generation perspective as a next level in, in your organization's maturity. So things like um, data monetization or even participating in connected ecosystems. So imagine your machine is a, a one of the components of an overall solution, being able to actually share data across those machines and then be able to influence um, you know, a broader portal or experience uh, you know, for, for your customers will provide additional differentiation uh, for for your products and, and your services and potentially additional monetization. There's also new business models that could be explores, explored, whether they might be paper use or paper outcome business models. And then don't forget about platform enabled marketplaces where others can build on top of your products and add capabilities. Uh, and you know that could be monetized in a different way as well. Uh, finally, from a net new revenue generation perspective, there's, there's a clear opportunity to think about <clears throat> contract management and looking at the data that you've received and probably have collected so far and understanding you know the scenarios that have caused maintenance and required you know additional investment in field services uh, or from a client perspective you know downtime issues etc there is an opportunity to mine that information and use that for much more personalized 
uh, dyna, you know, and contract uh, clauses, uh, and more importantly, being able to actually provide customized SLA uh, SLAs to to various clients and be able to monetize those in in different ways with different clients. So, you know, as you mature in in you know coming from the low hanging fruit, there's definitely lots of opportunity to think about revenue generation. Uh, you know, extending beyond what you've already uh, been doing. From a customer satisfaction and operational efficiencies perspective, you know, there are a, a lot more areas and use cases there as well. For instance, there is significant opportunity to optimize your field services, reduce cost while doing so, which may mean, you know, how can we make sure that experts are, you know, experts are available at the right time, that, you know, you're scaling them, uh, your the resources, uh, you know, in the field and a training perspective uh, are, are, are enabled to successfully deal with issues. Uh, so those are areas where you can, you know, uh, balance net, net new revenue generation opportunities with additional cost cutting opportunities uh, to further provide a business case for expanding and scaling the investments you've already made in industrial IoT. And if you think about long term perspective, there's you know, various other scenarios that are opening up, things like, uh, you know, as more and more of these machines are able to talk among, you know, with each other for, based on additional standard, you know, standards that, that are emerging, you know, you're able to do things like uh, perform autonomous actions uh, based on state, based on an environment, and what's going on there. Uh, you can, you know, further, in, you know, provide automation capabilities uh, demand sensing and proactive marketing and selling capabilities, and obviously beyond upsell and cross sell, uh, you know you can think about um, further waste reduction. Uh, so you know when you see long term, there's you know again a lot more opportunity. So I think as a as a uh, you know a business, as you think about you know I've made a leap into industrial IoT, and there is a roadmap of you know, the use cases and the monetization of those, realize that there is a, a lot more up there on the horizon and there are emerging technologies that are going to make those additional use cases even more powerful and achievable in the end, providing further differentiation for your company and the products and services that you're delivering. So very excited to talk to you about those today. And one of the things that we believe at Productive Edge is that it's the balancing act between three elements that are crucial in ensuring that the right type of uh, the, the right type of opportunity is presented to the client, uh, to your clients, or to your market, or to your channel at the right time. And what are the factors that influence? You know, what is the right time for something? Is 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 a mixture of three things. One is the customer exper you know, innovation and customer experience. What is it that you're actually delivering to the end end customer? Uh, whether it might be your client, whether it might be a channel partner, whether it might be a B2B to B2C uh, or B2B to B concept, uh, whether it might be uh, your field services, whether it might be your client, you know, client success teams, uh, customer success teams, whether it might you know, be your call centers, uh, all of those experiences have to deliver uh, in a manner that, you know, that, uh, that is, provides value to them. Uh, but at the same time, you have to be aware of the second uh, component, which is the operating and business model optimization. Many times we've seen that connected products and services are brought to market, but the internal ability to respond isn't quite there yet. So is your operating model optimized? How you deliver that service? Is that, you know, is that uh, fully optimized? Is the business model um, uh, optimized in that sense as well. Are there opportunities for you to expand? And balancing that along with customer experience and when the right time for something is quite critical. And obviously the third big piece is product and service innovation. You know, how are you thinking about what is the right time for a certain service to be provided to the market? And uh, what kind of technologies are going to enable that? And, you know, balancing all of those three items is, is quite, quite critical. Therefore, we believe that you know, most companies have already made a bet on IoT, have already made a bet on services driving the next generation of revenue growth for their organizations, have made an awareness. There is an awareness that their operating models still have potentially be optimized. In that case, you know, as more and more companies have begin, begun that investment, 
there is an opportunity to start accelerating in some other areas where technology is already there. So what we want to talk to you about today are things like being able to manage contract terms more intelligently, make the contracts that, uh, that, that deliver poor SLAs to you, uh, to your clients, uh, or just provide more transparency uh, to your organization. You know, those are, those are important uh, aspects of, uh, of contract management that you need to think about. Additionally, uh, there, are, uh, uh, there are cases around field service optimization um, that need to also be, be addressed. For instance, you know, your, your, you know, how do you scale the experts in the field? That is a challenge. How do you train uh, staff around the data from um, data from um, data from these you know data coming from these devices? They have to be to be managed as well. So we will talk to you about those things today, uh, and our goal is to uh, help you see you know what are the you know what are the opportunities right in front of you that you can extend and and take advantage of. So dynamic contract management and SLA management help you. We'll talk about how it can help you reduce your overhead, uh, provide quick diagnoses, uh, you know, uh, what services need, need SLA, what SLAs might be breaching, how do, you, how do you digitalize the contracts and the terms of the contracts so the machine is more aware of, uh, you know, of, uh, of what contract terms it may be breaching, and more importantly, how can the right experts then respond to that in a timely manner so that things can be addressed very quickly. So, with that, I'd like to um, invite um, Sanjay to talk to us about uh, dynamic contract management. Sanjay, please take it away. Hey, Rahil. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you, everyone, on the call. Uh, my name is Sanjay, and uh, I'm going to talk about how we can creatively manage contracts that organizations sign up and manage them by using the, your existing investments in inter, you know, industrial internet. So your investments are done. You kind of have an online you know, running operations of industrial IoT. But then you know, are, are you sure that all your teams are already are aware of all the contracts and other related commitments? For example, you sign an SLA and your field service teams may not be aware of such SLAs. Uh, they break down insurance and similar you know, commitments on the insurance of a machine may not be, you know, uh, may not be known to the, to the teams that manage those machines. And you know, it may also happen sometimes that you may end up getting an unexpected warranty claim for a broken you know, component, uh, which again you know, comes as a total surprise. So the question then is, how do you leverage your existing investments in, in industrial internet and automate you know, the compliance of your contracts and similar commitments using these investments? So you know, let's look at four examples of what those contracts could be that, are, that surround a given machine. You can imagine a crane, you can imagine a lathe machine, you know, and then you can see that when you sell a product, you know, you actually guarantee a certain performance, uh, you know, in the context of um, an electrical submersible pump, they, they, you know, the guaranteed quantities are the flow rate, the height, the pumping pressure and the efficiency. And similarly, there is manufacturer's warranty. There is O&M agreement where you commit, you know, 99.99% .99 of time. Or, uh, you know, there is also the breakdown insurance where your insurance company you know, make sure that, you know, they do the inspections in, you know, uh, continuously. But at the same time, if your uh, performance and your usage patterns are not in alignment with their expectations, the premiums start going up. So, you know, given all this landscape, what do we do? I mean, what is a scenario, a real scenario that, you know, we're talking about? So here is one wherein we talk about a set of 120 integrated electrical submersible pumps deployed at, a, at an oil and gas company at an oil field. It has several components and all of these components are IoT enabled and a series of sensors including viscosity, velocity, pressure sensors are deployed. It's a fairly expensive installation costing, costing about $25 million. And you know, you can imagine 
that the payment you know to uh, to a company that sells such equipment is not realized at one go it takes five years to realize there are other contracts that are signed up as well such as the uh, you know the sla that we spoke about which guarantees uh, 99.99 percent of time so keeping this mind uh, this scenario in mind let's move forward and see what happens when one of these machines break down you know typically they say that agreements are pulled out when there is no agreement and that's what happens when a machine breaks down you end up starting to find out which agreements were signed what was the commitment and so you end up you know getting into paperwork emails phone calls and you know in the worst case you get hit with serious penalties so you want to avoid this now how do we do that right so the question then is you know is there a way that we already have these iot enabled machines these machines are sending data into your cloud can these machines not execute the contract themselves right so that's the question and once you are able to execute the contract you go a little further and say that a contract that executes in multiple organizations at the same time so these are what one would call as cross enterprise processes you know that can that be you know implemented so that is the you know vision we want to put in front of you by using a case of um, a, a crane now this crane you know has uh, is designed to hold or ho hoist 20 tons um, and the hook swing you know of the rope can be you know cannot be more than 5 per 5 degrees um, so keeping these you know physical parameters in mind you can see that there are um, you know using a blockchain we can actually automate some of the contractual commitments that we spoke about so one of those contractual commitments imagine the hook load uh, exceeds 20 tons in that case you may want to remove rope breakage from the coverage of a warranty right or if the hook swing you know greater is greater than 5 degrees which also means that the rope may break and an accident may happen leading to a safety incident uh, so you may want to report uh, an incident like this in automation to the operational health and safety organization so there are these scenarios that can be automatically executed and implemented using blockchain technology where multiple ledgers for you know parties that are part of the ecosystem come together and interact with each other this is the architecture that we implement to make this possible so you see on the left uh, you know is the physical world where you have iot devices such as uh, pressure sensors temperature sensors uh, vibration sensors obviously sending data into iot gateways and the gateway then is interacting with a cloud environment such as azure iot hub which is you know highlighted here so the data from the the sensors keep coming in on the on the on the azure hub we actually put in a filter uh, which we call as uh, you know uh, the filter basically takes out only those events which are considered as contractually material so we are interested in events that show that the hook load is more than 20 tons and so anything less than 20 tons is not contractually material but if it is more than 20 tons it becomes contractually material when we when once we receive contractually material events we execute smart contracts on the blockchain and the result of that smart contract which is which work, you know which is called as a smart contract event is then passed on through an enterprise service bus to a downstream enterprise system for action uh, to be taken so if the premium has to go up you know that that event will be passed on to a premium management system and so the premium can increase from that point on we use a variety of blockchains but right present we are building on hyperledger fabric which is a blockchain that was created by IBM and then open sourced uh, to Linux Foundation, uh, but we are also now, you know, starting to build on, you know, other blockchain solutions based on a variety of use cases that we consistently encounter. So let's go deeper into this uh, demonstration of uh, of a EOT crane. Now we spoke about uh, multiple contracts. Now these contracts are signed across multiple entities. So what you see here is an ecosystem that comprises six partners. So there is a customer, which is Marathon Oil and Gas, manufacturer, which is Caterpillar, service provider, which is Northline, insurer, 
and uh, insurer, financial lender, a bank, and finally a regulatory authority. And the, per the actions for you know, each of these organizations will be performed by a specific role. So for marathon, it will be either manager operations or manager of maintenance, depending on what actions they perform. So all of these uh, roles are then put together to create an ecosystem. And this ecosystem will then execute contracts such as performance guarantee breakdown insurance or manufacturer's warranty. So we'll now go into a demo, uh, which shows, uh, which is broken into two major components. In the first component, we will see an ecosystem getting built up. Um, and then in the second one, we'll see a live demonstration of how a blockchain actually executes a smart contract and creates alerts or violations when you know, events that are out of the range uh, take place. So the build out of ecosystem happens in, in a few stages. So let's quickly go through a summary of these before we get into the, the real uh, application. So we sign up, uh, which is a simple process. Uh, we select uh, you know, one of the stakeholders. So we have six stakeholders in this uh, ecosystem. Uh, this list of stakeholders is, um, is completely configurable based on, the, based on your needs. Uh, so this can be dynamically changed. And you, once you pick customer, you identify the role of the customer. You pick up, put in the details of the customer, the name, you know, organization name, email address, and then you add that particular um, uh, stakeholder into the ecosystem. And you continue doing this uh, to add, you know, to build an ecosystem comprising six different um, people. And this can go up, you know, even more. So there is no physical limitation on how many. Uh, you know, stakeholders there could be in an ecosystem. What you see here on the next screen then is the set of conditions which we call dynamic contracts, right? So, you know, the first one, for example, talks about if the hook load is greater than 20 tons, uh, then, you know, rope breakage is not covered as part of the contractual uh, arrangement. Or if the hook swing angle decrease, you know, in degrees is more than five, then report to OSHA. And you can see that you know, the real contractual clauses that you would see in the printed paper, on a printed paper, are now available here uh, to be implemented completely dynamically. And that you know, then enabling uh, cross-enterprise workflows. So those workflows that happen in multiple organizations at the same time. And then once we are at the end of it, we basically confirm the creation of this ecosystem. So let me quickly jump into the real application where I have kept all of this ready and I'm just going to sign in here uh, to see, to show you how the ecosystem gets built up. So I'm going to pick the ecosystem of dynamic contract management, click on the, uh, that particular card, go next, and you'll see that the same stakeholders which I had added in the, on the screen uh, are available here. So we go next, we see the same conditions that we have here. Uh, we go next and then we name the ecosystem. So we say dynamic contract management demo. And then we just click on create network. And on, on when we click on this create network, it basically launches a project, a process behind the scenes uh, that you know, ends up creating the entire network. So this takes about 120 seconds. So while that happens, let's go into the second part of the demo, which is a real time demo of you know, how a contract is getting executed. So what you have in front of you is actually a blockchain that is receiving data from Raspberry Pi. So that is something like this, a Raspberry Pi actually pumping data into the blockchain. Uh, and some of the code you know, here shows how we are executing the data pump getting you know, received from sensors and then being sent to the cloud to be inserted into the blockchain itself. So, so the next screen, what you see here, this is very interesting because what you see here are two conditions that we put in place. So if the temperature of a machine, and in this context, it is a HVAC, if the machine, if the HVAC is creating, uh, running a temperature of, you know, greater than 22 degrees Celsius, then it becomes a violation of that particular contract. And all of these violations are consistently being saved. They're being written on the blockchain as events. 
now more you know the, on the other side if the machine has not been taken down for maintenance then it means you you know the customer has not taken care of the machine effectively and so what you see is whenever there is you know the the volume the number of minutes seconds of operation is more than 4500 you see a violation coming in here as well so uh, we took a break we actually restarted the machine and then for quite some time we did not get violation of operations time until we hit this point where we started seeing those violations again so at the latest uh, you know the machine continues to run at a higher temperature and you know continues to report violation of a contract so as we go back uh, what we see is a, con a ecosystem having getting getting created with all these members uh, you know into the stakeholders into the ecosystem so with that i will hand it over to tim and uh, we'll come to the close of this particular demonstration thank you Hello, everybody. Um, so I'm going to talk to you, as Rahil mentioned earlier, about the merging of taking this data pipeline that we've, we're bringing in using solutions like Shrocken to then also merge in um, technologies that are actually in the field and providing additional capabilities through the data pipeline that you may have already created in your products. So talking through that, we, as Rahil pointed out, industrial products have already begun the, the IIoT transformation. Um, however, there's a fundamental disconnect between the wealth of digital data available from IoT-based smart connected products and the physical world that we apply it to. So as you see here, there's really been a evolution of products. So many years ago, we just had unconnected, um, you know, non-digital enabled products and then we move to smart products, some with digital displays, some that are gathering insights um, using different types of tools like OBD2 devices in order to gather those types of uh, data. Then we've moved to a more smart, connected product, um, ones in which we're uh, using sensors, smartphones, various utilities to actually correct a, a system of products. And then now we're moving into the fourth phase here, which is using those to actually bring those insights into the physical world right out into the field. This introduces technology like augmented reality. And for those not familiar, AR is a set of technologies that superimpose digital data and images on the physical world. Uh, it, brings, it helps to promise um, closing that gap that I mentioned of actually solving problems out in the field. Going to the next slide. Uh, so there are already many different uh, industries and companies that are using, that have already started adopting augmented reality. The figures that you see here cover the percent of enterprises surveyed by PTC who have confirmed that they already have AR adoption in place or are in the progress of delivering an AR solution. So as you can see here, uh, momentum is very much in progress for industrial products. Um, some of the top five use cases for AR in these industries are creating differentiated product sets, improving sales and marketing, uh, by, through use of any sort of product showcasing um, you know, from a remote standpoint, um, improving operational efficiencies, uh, new training methods, and just generally lower costs. Uh, so with the, so many companies that already have a plan in place, really the, the adoption and the benefits that you get, uh, it, it cannot wait. Going more into where we see the key AR it, with being the key technology for merging those digital capabilities, at Productive Edge, we believe that remote assist through augmented reality is where you'll likely see uh, the method that enables businesses to first get into that benefit. So using a, a remote assist solution will help to reduce your field time um, engineers in order to uh, bring a solution faster, 
to enable collaboration at a distance, maybe when your expert technician is not available, and to do so with a hands-free heads-up display. Uh, Microsoft and Productive Edge have worked jointly to build a solution accelerator that combines technologies across IoT, machine learning, augmented reality, and this allows companies to bring remote assistance into the field. In short time, we'll be providing a demo of this technology and to show you where that can fit the customer needs servicing your industrial products. First, I'm going to show you a few different success stories in doing so. So at BAE Systems, they used a drag and drop solution for actually embedding 3D models right into HoloLens displays. And that resulted in an assembly line cost reduction of 90%. Uh, Bosch, uh, their company, Rexroth, um, they used it for within their hydraulic unit capabilities. So actually bringing 3D representations, using it for um, in sales purposes to visualize how that product might be uh, adding capabilities and configured within your subsystem. And at Lee Company, uh, they found that the various AR investments that they've made, for every $20 that they invest in AR, or for every $1 that they invest in AR, rather, they get a $20, $20 return. Now, going into the demo. So what I'm going to show you here is a solution accelerator that um, I'll explain to you what a solution accelerator is. So this is a program that we have established with Microsoft and Productive Edge a partner within their solution accelerator programs. And we have started working in the areas of remote monitoring, industrial IoT, uh, device simulation, predictive maintenance, all of these with just solving different IoT scenarios. And in the IoT Remote Assist Accelerator, um, some of the capabilities that we've actually created a template for that can then be extended into custom solutions for your uh, enterprise are Remote Assist with Technician Markup to where the technician from a remote console can provide pointers, um, provide any sort of drawings to the actual technician on the field. Um, we have provided capabilities for actually presenting that data visually within the AR display. And it's that real-time display of the data to the technician in the field and not just in the console um, of somebody that's working remotely that helps to bring, to merge the IoT data and the insights that you're gathering right into the field. And we'll talk about a few ways in which we're even further extending that and do a disconnected experience. And the solution that we have here, although it's shown here from a PC and a HoloLens, it's really built in a, in a method that can be extended to a variety of form factors, whether that's using AR in your smartphones um, or in different types of uh, hands-free uh, glass displays. And also, um, Using some offline data integration methods, we can actually sync that data to a, a field technician displaying from the device without actually going through the insights uh, that are gathered over on the server and in the cloud. So to the demo, I'm going to present a video here, and we'll show the solution. Hi, I'm Dimitri, and we're gonna show. Hi, I'm Dimitri, and we're gonna show how the use of IoT and augmented reality can help to quickly diagnose an industrial equipment issue using a solution built by Productive Edge. Let's say we have an issue with the compression pump on the water purification in our office. Looking at a dashboard we set up for measuring sensor data, we can see a problem with the pressure on the water purifier. I can contact Alex, who's on site, to take a look. Hi. I'm Alex from Productive Edge. I'll show you how using the HoloLens and sensors embedded in the purifier can help to quickly diagnose the issue. I'm getting a call from Dimitri about a problem with the water purifier. By using AR, we can work together to solve the problem. Okay, I'm looking at the purifier. If I tap on the purifier here, I'll start to visualize data. Here we just have a simple IoT pressure sensor that we've added to our purifier. 
but similar readings could be taken to measure any industrial operating conditions like heat, pressure, friction or noise and use the measured changes to predict when a machine is in need of maintenance. Hey, this is Dimitri here. I can see what Alex is looking at right from his point of view. Since it's kind of a tight space, the visuals are a little shaky. This is a common problem with remote assist, so I'm going to perform a quick screen grab and I'll interact with that to show Alex where to fix the problem. Now I can easily view a still to evaluate what I'm looking at and place a marker on what to adjust on the compressor. I can see the marker Dimitri put down and immediately know what to fix. Working together, the problem is now quickly fixed. By harnessing IoT data to create intelligent insights and combining that with AR for remote assistance, teams can quickly and more precisely solve problems together from any location in the world. It's the combination of these technologies that allow the vast amounts of data collected in industrial IoT to be channeled into powerful experiences, solving problems in real time. Productive Edge is at the forefront of this technology, and we look forward to discussing how this can help your business. So going back to our slides here. So I'd like to give a, a quick overview of, again, what we're looking at. So in a typical IIoT solution, we are focusing on taking the physical inputs from the devices uh, potentially bringing that through an IoT cloud gateway, um, using some field gateways, generally ingesting that data, going through analysis, and then really creating a digital experience. Um, you may be familiar with the term digital twin. It's really your digital copy of that uh, product, that connected product or machine. What we take by using AR, we are actually creating that as a physical experience. So using WebRTC to connect your different mobile devices, um, your, uh, in the case we had here, the HoloLens and a, and a PC, you can actually create that experience right out in the field. And so let's talk through a few of the problems that we're actually solving here. So first is data visualization. And so in typical, uh, remote assistant solutions, we're just connecting a, 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 an expert technician to somebody out in the field. And by actually combining IoT into that, we are bringing in the data the visualization and markers immediately present for all parties. So it just allows much better collaboration. A technician can view the data as they're modifying, uh, making, making their adjustments. Um, they're not waiting for somebody to be giving them, them that feedback and saying that things are fixed. It's much more benefit, beneficial to be able to look at your own dashboard as well. Um, one, one use case that we have found that it was often a problem in remote assist situations was just that the point of view of the connected person was difficult for the remote technician to actually go in and look, take a look at something, um, take a look at the machine and say, okay, I, I need to put some mark up here and take a look at that particular uh, component. By actually creating the ability to just snapshot, create a static image, interact with that, and then still display that to the user that's out in the field, um, you solve that issue. And then also just hardware availability. Not every company is going to have hollow lenses or uh, other types of AR devices for all of their people out in the field. Um, maybe you only have one and you need two technicians to be serving a problem. So by using a WebRTC solution, this allows you to, for multiple people to be collaborating across desktop, smartphones, and different types of AR headsets. Another important problem, especially out in uh, remote settings, such as say you're in a remote oil field, and you just, in, in many other industrial settings, you generally have, you often have a low bandwidth type of connectivity, uh, one where you might not be able to do a real-time chat, uh, particularly the video chat uh, over, over WebRTC. In those cases, we've actually built the ability for one, for to create uh, through Bluetooth connectivity, uh, recognizing a device first through a QR code or NFC, 
Um, and then from there, using Bluetooth connectivity to actually transmit that data onto the HoloLens, um, you can actually, the technician will be able to visualize the data from that machine and uh, work to solve it using that without gathering that from the cloud. In other cases, it, it just whether you're disconnected on the cloud or maybe you don't have an expert technician that's readily available, that's readily on call, um, in those cases, we've also built in the capabilities to have embedded instruction into the device. So in the case of HoloLens, you can actually uh, bring the diagnosis, uh, you know, indicate where the problem is based off of the sensors in the device, and then actually using that expert knowledge that we've embedded into the device, actually provide instruction for how to solve it right there. Going into a little bit more detail on platform considerations. So we at Productive Edge really feel that in order to have a world-class solution, that you should be focused on not just one type of device, because as I mentioned before, you may have different employees that need to be servicing products in, in different types of with different types of hardware availability. So it's worth considering knowing when to use the different devices, though. So for mobile devices, uh, you know they're nearly accessible to any sort of employees. Um, almost everybody these days has a smartphone, whether that's you know, Android or iOS. Um, but the solution here can also be uh, used on tablets to have a larger visual visual display. Um, there's generally a lower cost of implementation on mobile devices, and you can easily connect to those individuals without an AR headset. The problem here is that they're not hands-free, so it becomes a little bit more di difficult to uh, to do your job um, as a technician if you're also holding up your smartphone device. That was where the headset comes in, and although there's a higher cost to that, you can have the actual human point of view for the remote technician, and you have a hands-free experience as well. Now I'm going to pass it back to Reheal in order to wrap things up. Thank you, Tim. As you saw, uh, both from Sanjay and from Tim, that the opportunities uh, with, you know, with extending your existing investments in IoT uh, are quite strong. You know, you've already done the low-hanging fruit potentially. You already have some kind of a predictive uh, maintenance service already there. You've probably already have, um, you know, better insights for your field teams. Uh, what we're talking about today is how can you extend that? How can you, how can you go further uh, and deliver better, you know, better contract management, uh, potentially even personalized contract terms and SLA, SLA terms for specific clients, be able to respond to them more quickly, uh, you know, create a better experience for clients in delivering real time, uh, you know, real time, uh, real time maintenance. So. Uh, these are these are technologies and capabilities that that are here today, uh, and we'd love to uh, talk to you more about them. Uh, as an as an overview for Productive Edge, we are a digital business consulting and a technology solutions company headquartered in Chicago with offices here in the Northeast and Boston, as well as presence around the world. Uh, our focus really is to to deliver differentiated experiences uh, through through IoT, uh, through in, intelligent automation, through machine learning. Through augmented reality, and it's about you know delivering uh, you know de delivering experiences that that really uh, differentiate you from your competitors, and and it's it's uh, you know it's it's the the ability for you to leverage technology, which really in the end uh, would uh, would matter. Our experience is across various uh, industries. We focus on you know insurance, retail, manufacturing. Uh, you know, and fleet management, our technology solutions are across those industries. So data and AI, intelligent automation, internet of things, cloud native solutions, focus on mobility, as well as augmented reality. Um, as a next step, we, we would love to talk to you about where you are in your journey uh, and your maturity uh, from a, a services standpoint uh, in delivering services. And uh, you know, if you love to welcome an opportunity to speak with you about uh, how you could potentially uh, 
you know, bring dynamic contract management, digital contract management, uh, in, and make your machines even more intelligent uh, while also delivering remote assist and empowering your field to actually react better uh, to those uh, to those events. Uh, with that, uh, you, you know, we are here uh, to take questions now and would love to answer your questions. And uh, with that, we want to thank you for taking the time and look forward to uh, hearing from you again soon. Thank you, everyone.